Hello, friends, and welcome. Most of you know I just had a week vacation and it was a great time, but I was drinking a little bit of caffeine most mornings and I wasn't eating the way I normally do. My schedule was off. And this morning when I went to show up for my practice, um, I was having a really hard time getting motivated at the thought of having to like get up and do standing poses and downward dogs and all the things. And so I made myself a deal that I just had to lay down on my back and do floor work. So if you're ever in that space and you just want to lay on the floor for whatever reason, right? It doesn't have to be because you're out of vacation and you're out of whack. It can be because you're dealing with grief. It can be because you're in a place of lethargy and you're trying to get motivated, uh, et cetera. So for whatever the reason, if floor work sounds like it's the one for you today, we're going to start on our backs. So you can just have your props off to the side. We probably won't use many of them. I'll give you a couple of options if you want to, right? Use a little bit of the abdominals, the whole core line, but really the abdominals to come on down. Let's walk our feet out wider than the hips, no wider than the edge of the mat, somewhere in that realm and let the knees lean in, arms out with your palms up and just take in a few moments. Eyes can be opened or closed, <laughs> she says with the yawn. I'm going to leave mine a little open just because I am prone towards um, tiredness today. And so I want to still take a few moments in stillness and check in to the body, the breath, right? The holistic body, I could say, um, without moving further into that lethargic, heavy, dull state that I seem to be in this morning. And I want you to kind of have a grasp. Maybe you've smoothed the breath out a little bit, softened some muscles that are not needed. Go ahead and walk your feet back into hip distance. Extend your left leg out to straight, but it can be soft. It doesn't have to be active. And bring that right knee into the body. You have options of behind the knee or in front of the shin. Right? And you're just going to hug the knee in without being aggressive. Um, when I start this one, I just like to have my hands um, interlaced with a, just a little bit of weight and just that gentle uh, uh, expression of the knee coming to the chest without me actively pulling on the leg with my arm muscles or anything like that. And take another breath there. We'll get there, I promise. And then go ahead and maybe hug that knee in just a little bit. Take an inhale if it feels all right in your body and especially your neck. Go ahead and pull down your second center two inches beneath your navel and two inches above your navel as well, the upper abdominal area and lift the upper body up, hugging into half fetal ball. Lower the upper body down and keep the right leg in, but we're gonna switch it slightly. You're gonna bring your right hand onto the knee. It's already there, right? I like to bring it on the top of it or behind if you need to. I'm gonna take my left hand on my ankle and I'm gonna gently pull my heel so it moves over the pubic bone or thereabout. My right knee can go a little wide. Right, so my legs coming in at a little bit of an angle here. And I'm just breathing from that place. This is passive in my hip. Okay, now we're gonna switch that. You're gonna keep the right knee wide, but place the left hand on it. Take your right hand, grab that ankle, that right ankle, and now let both the knee and the ankle go wide. The shin is parallel to a wall off to the right side of your mat, so to speak. Take a breath from there. Okay. Next, we're gonna move that towards half happy baby. So go ahead and put your left foot on the ground. Extend, not extend, uh, uh, unbend your right knee until your foot's facing the ceiling and then either behind the knee, around the shin, the ankle or the pinky edge of the foot, if you can get it. And if you can today, I'd love you to take, interlace your hands around or you could use a strap for that. So I want you to hug your right knee in towards the right rib cage, not letting it go wide like it wants to. We're gonna go there next, but right now hug it in. And it's almost like you could keep your toes pointing straight back towards the head side of the mat, yeah? And you're push pulling your foot into your legs, your uh, hands, your hands into your foot. Take another moment there. Keep your left hip heavy, but pull your right knee down to the ground. So I'm not lifting my left hip to do that today. Okay, now I'm gonna bring my right hand to the 
inside of my left foot. I like it on my heel personally. I'm gonna let my knee move away from the body now. And now I'm moving that leg into external rotation, but I'm still in half happy babies. There are two versions of half happy baby. I'm gonna push pull my hand into my heel, my heel into my hand. Again, I could use a strap. I could bring my hand behind my thigh if that's better, or even on this side with the wide legged variation. Take a breath from there. Keep the left hip steady and heavy as you pull the right knee down towards the ground. Okay, now you're going to bring that leg as it is across the body. Bring the left knee up into that right ankle. And here we are in um, Sukhirandasana, right? Eye of the needle. You can place your hands behind the left thigh, in front of the left shin. You could leave the left foot on the ground if that's better for you. Find your version of eye of the needle. Long spine, flexed right foot for knee protection. Breathing. Okay. Now go ahead and your left hand is going to take your outer right foot. Put your left foot down on the ground. And we're going to do IT band land. But you're going to go ahead and you're going to take your, your left hand, bring it in front of the ankle and grab the pinky edge of the foot or just bring it onto the shin bone. And now go ahead and extend that right leg straight and moving it towards straight, but across the body a little over to the left. And I'm shaking pretty good here. <laughs> and I'm going to push my foot or my leg into my hand. My, my hand pushes into my leg. So again, we're doing a lot with that toning of the muscles as we stretch. So it's a push-pull action between the leg and the hand, wherever the hand is, right? Even as I start to straighten that leg, and feeling somewhere in that outer right leg line, probably. Next is Eagle's Pose. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna bring that left leg up into the back of the right thigh. I fold the right leg over. If you wanna do the shin cross, crossing your foot um, across the shin, you can. That's a little too much for my hips. I'm gonna bring my feet down, pick my hips up, and I'm gonna move my hips a little bit left of center. Bring the knees back up to the chest or don't and let the legs move over to the right, tee the arms out. Now the left hip is following the knees and that's great, right? That right leg is kind of weighting it, weighting it in, which is lovely. So I'm gonna see if I can get my ribs to turn a little bit to the left. Don't be aggressive with this, but push down into your right arm, right? Maybe push into the back of the head a little bit as you let those ribs, the upper ribs specifically, move back and down towards the floor to the left. Take a breath. And inhale those knees. Oh, back up. Yeah. Go ahead and uncross the legs. Get your hips back to the center of the mat. Walk your feet out as wide as your mat. Let the legs go over the right again. And then this time we're gonna do a version of, uh, what's this called, windshield wiper. The right foot may or may not go up onto the left knee. Your arms may or may not reach overhead. Right hand's gonna grab the left wrist. And then remember, it's not about pushing that left leg down with the right knee. Think of lengthening it, helping it lengthen forward towards the direction your toes are facing, the foot side of the mat. And of course, my right hand is helping my left arm lengthen back towards the head side of my mat. Take a breath and release that foot back down. Bring the arms to a comfortable position, the knees back up. Keep the feet wide, lean the knees in and just pause for a moment. Notice what you notice after that sequence. Okay, walk your feet back into hip distance. Extend the right leg out to straight. I'm gonna change my body so my left leg is facing you. I think that's more helpful view-wise, right? Bring the left leg into the body, interlacing either behind the thigh or in front of the shin. And again, rather than doing a tight pull at this moment in time, let it be more that your interlaced hands, right? Softening, allow that arms to kind of weight the knee in towards the body gently. Take another breath there. And now we'll get a little more active with the pulling. So I use my arm muscles to gently pull the knee in a little closer. I pull two inches beneath my navel to my spine. I pull two inches above my navel to my spine. I might bring my upper body up if that feels okay in my neck. I could put a hand behind my head, right? And come on down. Left hand's gonna stay on the knee. It might come up to the top to help control. Right hand on the 
left ankle and I'm going to let my knee go wide to the left away from me. I'm going to let my heel come and hover over my pubic bone-ish, something like that, and just breathe from that place. Keeping the knee wide, I place my right hand on my left knee, and then I'm going to move the shin over a little bit and try to catch it with my left hand if I can, right? Letting the ankle and the knee both go a little wide to the left. You're waking up those hip joints in a pretty big way with this sequence if you can't tell. Now I'm going to go ahead and move towards half happy baby. So I'm going to walk that left foot on the ceiling and I might bring my left hand onto the side of my leg or knee somewhere. I might, if I can, interlace my hands or use a strap. And then you're doing the push pull action. So push the feet up into the hands, the hands down into the foot. Oh, sorry, right foot is on the ground. Sorry, sorry, sorry. And then try to keep the left knee into the ribs for this, the toes pointing towards the same direction the crown of the head is. We'll switch it in a second, go to that external rotation. Keep your right hip heavy, but can you pull your left knee a little closer to the earth now that we've been there? <clears throat> and then bring your left hand to the inside of the foot, grabbing the heel or you know the ankle, whatever you can get. Let the knee, the left knee move out to the left, the left toes move out to the left. So external rotation push pull the foot and the hand into one another or whatever part of the body you're working with right keep that tension that toning keep the right hip heavy and pull the left knee closer to the earth and i might not even see that move you might just feel it that's all right that's great actually that's not beyond all right that's great okay now we're going to bring that across the body as it is right for eye of the needle right knee you might just sit on the ground bring it in interlace the high thigh around shin whatever variation you want of this today my requests are long spine right instead of rolling up into a ball it's not wrong it's a different way to work it so neutralize the spine as much as you can and keep that left foot flexed take another breath Okay, and then you're going to go ahead and, oh, now I have to remember what is next. I don't have anyone who can save me and tell me. Oh, I have IT band land. So you're going to take that right hand either to the pinky edge of the foot or the outside of that left leg, and you're going to start to straighten the left leg any amount with it moving a little across the body over to the right. Once you get there, do your push-pull action, leg into hand, hand into leg. And just take a breath or two from there, feeling anything opening in that left outer leg kind of area, back of knee, hip, breathe. Now we go into eagle's pose. That right knee is going to come up behind the knee. You cross the legs over into eagle legs. We're going to pick the hips up and move the hips a little bit right of center. You can leave the legs low or you can bring them up to the chest, your choice. Let them come over, fall over to the left this time, teeing the arms out and let that left leg weight the right leg over and the hip kind of moves to the left. Great. Now push into your left arm to see if you can get your upper body, your chest and the upper back ribs of the right side to roll back down to the earth. Take a breath. And bring the knees back up uncross the legs, get your hips to the center of your mat, widen your feet, let your knees swoosh left, so windshield wiper variation, maybe left foot on right thigh, maybe arms overhead, grabbing right wrist, and then again, think about the length here, so I'm, my left foot's trying to help my right knee move forward towards the foot side of the mat, and my left hand's trying to help my arm Lengthen backward towards the back side, the head side of my mat. Breathing. Left foot releases down. Bring the knees up, bring the arms into Shavasana or something thereabouts. With the feet staying wide, lean the knees in and just pause there for a moment. Mm. Okay, we're going to roll onto our right side. Well, onto a side of your body. Let me say it that way. Feel free to support the head with the arm or a blanket or whatever you're working with, right? It might be your bicep. 
And then we're just going to do a couple of arm circles just to say hi to our upper body before we finish. So your top arm, remember sensitive shoulder variation is fingertips on the shoulder and the elbow circles. And you might start there and eventually reach out, or you might start with the arm all the way extended. Soft joints, feeling free to twist the body open if you would like, but also remember I can keep my shoulders stacked and circle the arm and it's gonna isolate it a little more in my shoulder joints. So I get to choose which, which would be the best for me right now. Go ahead and go the other direction. And I'm just, um, I'm not telling you because I think you should be doing this. I'm just telling you in case you're looking at me like, hey, I'm not rolling into a twist since we just did that windshield wiper twist and the um, uh, eagle twist. And I'm trying to get into my shoulder just a little bit more. That's me, that's me. And then go ahead and turn. Um, pardon me for turning my back to you, but this is one I don't think y'all need to see. You know, this one pretty good if you study with me regularly. Support the head on something in either fingertips on the shoulder, circling the elbow, and then extending out, or maybe never extending out, or full extension on the arm. Either rolling the shoulder back, looking back behind you, and moving that into a twist, and still, you're still getting into the shoulder. Don't worry about that, right? Or keeping the shoulders stacked, moving the arm into circles. And then go the other way. One more thing before we finish. Well, I guess it would be two because we're gonna lay in crocodile for just a second to finish, finish. But come on to your belly. Either palms down by your side, gentler version, or interlacing your hands behind your back, a little more intense. Press the feet down, the thighs lift, and either push your hands down to the floor to lift your chest, your head, right? Or interlace the hands and reach the knuckles back. So either one works. We're in a version of locust pose, Shalabhasana. We're not going to lift the feet today. We're going to keep the pinky toe edge pushing down, rotating our inner groin up. Most people who work with me, that's the part we forget to do. <laughs> keep that belly toned up, the tailbone moving down. One more breath here. And then bring your arms up, elbows wide, hands stack. Bring your forehead to the backs of your hands. And let's take about four big old soft belly breaths. And by big, I don't mean strain to get more air in. I just mean come back to conscious breathing. Or maybe we smooth the breath out and take a few less breaths per minute. And then when you are ready, you're gonna bring your hands next to your ribs, thereabouts, think of coming up. We're gonna push up, tone your belly in like crazy. You can keep the knees down, come into either a kneeling or a sitting position. And let's end with just a couple of breaths from here in this spot, just feeling the length of the spine. Hopefully, maybe if we are so lucky, the hips feel like they have a little bit more mobility. Maybe the shoulders too. We did a little bit in the shoulders. Bring your palms together in front of your chest, inhale. Exhale as you bow your head in, just taking a moment to be grateful for what you do have because of course, the more we're grateful for what we have, the more we have to be grateful for. Namaste. And I'm gonna do a shout out to a teacher, Christina Sell, who um, this is very much inspired by a sequence that she does, that's floor work that I like so very much. So thank you for inspiring me, Christina Sell. <laughs>